हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू अवंतिका डिजाइनरिंग सीरीज और ए डी एस एस वी लाइक टू कॉल इट एवरी वीक ऑन वेडनेसडे वी फीचर डिजाइन एंड टेक्नोलॉजी लीडर्स हु शेयर दर प्रोफेशनल जर्नी दर थॉट्स ऑन दर डोमेन ऑफ वर्क एंड डिजाइनरिंग वेर द वर्ल्ड ऑफ डिजाइन एंड इंजीनियरिंग मीट मेक श्योर यू फॉलोअर्स ऑन सोशल मीडिया इंस्टाग्राम लिंकड इन फेसबुक एंड ट्विटर एंड विद दैट लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद योर शो one of the things that we want to bring attention upon is the planning and the strategic iterations that go behind the scenes while developing a certain product in fact it might come to all of us as a surprise but following technology or design principles are not the only way to go about developing a successful and innovative solution indeed the resilience to think creatively requires one to understand much beyond these restricted concepts and today we have with us one such individual lud nathan who comes from a background of electronics engineering he further went on to study psychology explicitly he has known to deliver work of remarkable consistency in terms of planning and strategy which has led to immense value to every project he has been associated with he leads as a design director at frog design and drives his team towards excellence with his ability to merge technology design and business for global clients with his passion to talk and nurture the design culture among people we thought of having a conversation with him on design dialogue disruption on our journey of discovering designering Hey thanks Lud thank you so much for joining us um it's it's lovely to host you on our show today thank you rohit thank you so much for the opportunity so lud uh, you know before we kick start our conversation in technology and design the first thing that i uh, wish to you know know from you is how are you coping up with the covid-19 situation um, i hope all is well at your your teams and you know everyone's families and uh so first thing uh, what i think is for designers inspiration often comes from uh, being very close to the users and clients uh, i feel it's a difficult situation to work from home uh, and not having face time with most of the users and client but uh, we need to follow the uh, health guidelines at frog we use very good tools which is helping us to do a lot of brainstorming uh, posted whiteboard and also interacting on live boards this makes sure that we don't lose collaboration part which is very important for every designer uh we are also facilitating a lot of online workshops with clients and it has been effective during this covid situation um uh, and uh, frankly speaking we are also winning a lot of new projects uh, so we are busy with new business development as well oh wow that's that's exciting yeah one other uh, small important thing we do every day is meet our designers for a virtual uh, video chai time um, we have the chai time uh, across uh, frog india so what we do now is a virtual video chai time we usually um, interact every day uh, it's a casual meeting uh, i feel this is a very good method to make sure we get to see our team here and support our colleagues uh, during this uh, critical time this has been Uh, kind of uh, created a lot of good vibes in the team i think this is a good way to connect uh, with the team during the covid situation i think most of the people across the globe should try to meet uh, their own people every day and you know kind of make this a motivated motivated uh, situation i mean that's that's quite thought provoking i completely agree to uh, this part of it uh going forward for designers i think it'll be very interesting to see how we we will collaborate and interact with clients we always wanted to meet our users clients uh, have face time do a lot of workshop with them but now with the dynamics uh, will change travel and meeting people will be very difficult uh, we need to address this situation i guess it's an interesting problem to solve but um, the time would actually decide completely agree 
Um, in fact, you know, one of the interesting things while uh, researching about you and Frog, uh, we, we looked at this new initiative that Frog started about telehealth uh, toolkit for doctors uh, during this critical time. So could you tell us a little more about it? Because I believe that uh, your office also contributed in terms of developing this. Exactly. So um, Frog quickly put together a support portal uh, because of this COVID situation. Most of the doctors and uh, patients were kind of split and they were not able to kind of uh, meet each other. And doctors were, you know, um, uh, really wanted to avoid meeting patients. Uh, so uh, Frog actually came uh, very handy or maybe they quickly took up this kind of an initiative where telehealth toolbox uh, is a collection of guidelines and a practical tool that aims to accelerate the uh, adoption of telehealth uh, practices uh, by primary care physicians or anybody for that matter. So during this COVID uh, situation, um, I feel you know uh, the doctors could quickly kind of uh, go online and they can start uh, consulting their patients. They can set up the entire thing. And this toolbox is uh, kind of a uh, free. Uh, we have made this as open throughout the globe. Uh, doctors across the globe can actually go and uh, see the steps and how to install. Uh, what are the tools required? What are the payment gateways they require? And the entire setup they can do. Uh, and and maybe it is not just for the doctors. Uh, and I feel in fact it could be for every professional uh, supporting their clients remote remotely and you know want to make sure that they don't go very close to um, the people or clients they're interacting with i think it really makes sense to kind of uh, incorporate telehealth uh, across the globe well i think that's that's quite noble thought uh you know by by yeah. the team frog and that's 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 um, really helpful yeah in fact uh, you know lude moving from a covid situation i i wish to step into you know your walk of fame, uh, you know, your your life. Um, it's it's quite interesting to see things that you've done over a period of time. So can you walk us through some masterpieces, some milestones that have shaped you and your journey? Sure. Um, I worked on my <laughs> first uh, prototype 20 years back. Uh, it was a flash-based uh, prototype for a set-up box. Uh, with a lot of uh, videos in it, uh, I can still remember and laugh about it. Uh, I tried the uh, ethnography study a uh, long time back. I think in 20 years back, nobody knew you know, how to do the uh, ethnography study. But, you know, that's when I started, uh, when I went to a cable operator's office to understand how he tunes a digital box. That small visit gave me an amazing insight. I had a greater challenge. How will I convert a digital box to a setup box? It will be used by many users at home. Usually, if you see, there was um, you know, cable operators and you know people who are sending signals to home. But the the, the entire scenario would change. People would have set a box at home. Uh, we were working for Korea, Australia, and US markets. They have to tune their boxes by themselves. It was quite a challenge and a new product in the in the market. Nobody knew. Uh, how to do it so we were pointers in setup box we shipped a lot of products worldwide in, in 2000 and 2001 uh, we started the setup box in india setup box actually came in 2005 um, and i also got this opportunity to, to work on a lot of handle devices jukeboxes uh, even before ipod was launched in market um, and then POS TV for Philips, entertainment docking station for Singapore Airlines. Every three months, we used to kind of release new babies uh, in, in the market. I was lucky to work with the industrial design team. That was my first uh, job and, you know, a lot of learning from my managers during uh, those period. Um, and then post that uh, seven years of uh, you know, product development, I moved to Huawei, which was a telecom giant. I was asked to set up a design team in India and then work very close with R&D head. Uh, Huawei was an ocean of opportunity. I built about a 20-member team. We worked on a large number of telecom-based uh, products. Most of them were white-label solutions. A lot of travel to different countries, working and collaborating with big clients and some of the important projects. One such uh, important project I still remember and I would remember for my life is the uh, service delivery platform for uh, MTN. 
uh, MTN wanted to implement in 22 countries the SDP solution. And I was working with the solution team in Dubai to win this high word project. It was close to about $50 million project. And uh, I was very happy that we got the sign off based on our uh, initial deliverables that we did. And this was, you know, this really, you know, gave a lot of fame and, you know, a lot of appreciation from Huawei management. Um, post that seven years of work, there was too much of uh, telecom and, you know, products. I wanted to try something different. Um, I started to work for ENY Ernst & Young, um, one of the best financial consulting company. Uh, I worked on a budgeting tool. Um, I, I just worked for like 10 months with them, but, you know, um, the, the 10 months was a memorable one. Um, the budgeting tool, I got an award for it, uh, which will be used by finance heads across various organizations. So it's a budgeting tool, you know, companies would budget and, you know, the allocations would go to different finance departments. So that was an important tool. EY was having this vision of uh, going with products and, you know, uh, I, I didn't really see that, you know, flying. Uh, then I moved to Cognizant to handle a big creative team uh, in, in Bangalore. Um, a lot of recruitment. It was a wonderful team. I was handling about 90 designers. Then I moved to, um, you know, making sure um, they are doing wonderful job, create, uh, grooming them and making sure they are doing a fantastic job. Uh, post that, um, you know, short duration of one, one and a half year, um, I wanted to, you know, try uh, to work on a you know a, a very big project, so luckily I got this uh, the social insurance uh, government based project um, uh, as a digital transformation manager from uh, Cognizant Consulting. Um, so I had to move to Middle East um, for a couple of years, and I was handling this uh, entire design initiative. Um, in this um, you know duration, um, I really. Uh, remember those app uh, we launched a beautiful app for 8 million users this app gives me an immense uh, memory and um, you know happiness the app was so intuitive employees can actually see the contributions uh, they are paying every month they can see the future pensions they can see health benefits they can also see their uh, unemployment support if somebody is fired or somebody is not having job how would the government support them what is the salary, um, you know, certificates they can gather? What is the employment history? So the app was, you know, a kind of uh, complete, um, you know, uh, work life of an uh, individual would be captured in that. So if I compare to India, we have this uh, Provident Fund, uh, which is close to social insurance. We don't usually get much of details um, about our funds or service. Um but this app, you know, people like really appreciated the amount of data and information which was provided. Uh, I also worked very close to about 10 different projects for this Middle East uh, client. Very important projects, government initiatives, uh, like a big payroll project for the government in the sense like the entire country would come under one uh, payroll system. That's a very big initiative the government was taking. Uh, to avoid a lot of uh, loopholes from the employees and uh, employers and you know, stuff like that. Uh, one good thing is, you know, um, uh, I got to meet uh, World Bank uh, team uh, who were very happy to understand about the app and they wanted to take this as an example to various countries. And this was a big moment for me uh, in Middle East. Um, also, the government, uh, Middle East government, uh, had issued a appreciation certificate, which is which is like a a big certificate for me. Um, those are the you know very important moments. Post this engagement, um, I came back to Bangalore to start Frog India operations. Frog is a beam uh, company for many designers with uh, fifty years of legacy. Um, I was very happy to um, come come down from Middle East and you know, start this operations in India. Uh, I also welcomed many designers, uh, recruited some of the best designers in India, groomed them. We won together some fantastic programs. Um, I also handled some key account uh, and drive creative projects. Uh, a lot of development initiatives uh, um, out of Bangalore Studio. So this is uh, my journey um, I've been through. Oh, that's quite a lot of interesting things that you've done, dude, in your career. And and I was just thinking about 
um, you know, my experiences while I was, you know, going through your journey. Great. Uh, so, Lud, you know, from electronic psychology, user experience, you know, how do you connect the dots? I mean, how did you stumble upon the world of user experience design and so many things which have been different, I mean, from technology and, and, and where you are? How, how do you connect all of right, that? Right. Yeah, so after finishing my educations, um, you know, I was curious to do something different. Um, I, I really didn't have, you know, kind of a focused vision that, you know, I need to go into this domain. I was kind of exploring, but I wanted to do something really different. Um, then I saw this ad of, uh, you know, diploma of uh, program in digital design. It looked very interesting and, you know, it was new and I was curious and registered for uh, this program. Way back in 1999, uh, e-commerce and uh, you know was kind of becoming a boom, and I wanted to try my hands there. Uh, I started to like the design domain after the training, and I was like very curious, you know, what should I do? Yeah. Um, and then, in fact, from the institute, um, they asked me to you know uh, start teaching because I was hanging around the whole day in the lab, and I was uh, just you know working on design. Um, so they asked me to teach there. For that, I had to learn a lot more to teach. The next, I was teaching for the next three months. I was there with them and I was teaching. That's how the entire journey started. Um, then I joined as a UI designer in software embedded product company. That uh, The product company was really into creating uh, those products, which I mentioned, handle devices, setup boxes. So I joined as a you know UI designer there. Um, I'm happy dots are connected now, but it was not uh, exactly user experience way back. It all started as a UI designer, usability engineer, user centric designer, and then it was uh, more of an interaction designer and then user experience designer and so on. So a lot of learnings a long time back. Um, uh, we had uh, US government usability engineering portal uh, to learn and explore about user experience design. NID, IIT, or other colleges didn't have uh, the interaction design courses way back then. Uh, a lot of self-learning and uh, deeply involved on um, uh, consumer electronics-based uh, uh, products. That that kind of played the trick. And happy, um, my electronics psychology and design courses were you know connected uh, in what I do, and I'm happy to be excited to be in the space uh, going forward as well. So in fact, I'll come to that point of UI in a few moments. But one of the things while you were sharing this, um, you know, while you've been managing multiple roles uh, across so many years, uh, do you do you miss something uh, that you used to enjoy doing and you, you're unable to do that anymore right now? Frankly speaking, uh, my roles have been changing uh, or evolving over the period, but um, I've been in the uh, design throughout my career. Uh, also, uh, somehow connected very closely to human factor, which is about design and uh, psychology part of it. Also touching the user's emotion and experience. Um, I've been, you know, an advocate of uh, human factors for uh, um, about more than 15 20 years i've been talking about this and you know how do we make sure products are very user friendly how do we make the best product so a lot of conflicts with the development team a lot of issues with the development team but you know that's that's what um, makes a user experience designer but now it's easier people understand the value of user experience designers uh, one other thing, uh, important thing now i'm focused on is building the best teams and grooming grooming them I thoroughly enjoy and happy. Um, I feel happy to work closely with um, you know young and energetic designers. I would love to do more innovation-based projects um, with uh, new ideas. Uh, teach some students freshers. Um, I feel that you know being connected. Uh, I would also love to contribute to some of the traffic and pollution situations if I get opportunity. Uh, like an NGO or maybe I would like to work on infrastructure initiatives uh, by government. But again, everything connected to uh, you know, supporting people and their uh, understanding their issues. 
I, I'm sure I can empathize with this uh, being in Bangalore. Uh, you were thinking about right. uh, yeah. some of these exactly. problems. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, one of the things that you just mentioned right now about user experience. Now, you know, in, in my reading, my understanding, right from the early man picking up sticks to make fire uh, to now creating these multi-dimensional experiences, I think the, I, I think as a, as a race, we've come a long way. But, um, you know, what do you think about the institution of experience design? Is it deeply rooted in us as human beings or is it just an added bonus that we got, uh, you know, evolved into? Um, I don't think experience design or human factors uh, or empathy is kind of a new concept. Uh, I think it is rooted in human beings. We have always been service oriented to each other. Uh, we are social animals and um, I think entire um, uh, human have been supporting each other uh, for generation. Um, in fact, uh, I remember Gandhiji's word, the customer uh, is the king. Uh, this gives us a hint, you know, how can we create um, experience for others uh, or products or service or how can we make sure customer visit the visit us again and give a word of mouth. Uh, so I don't think experience design is really new or, um, you know, it's not new in this era. Just that we need to keep reminding to our colleagues, clients, or uh, to incorporate good design principles and remember from where, um, you know, we are creating products, for whom we are creating products and, you know, what kind of service they are really need. So I, fe I feel it is, it is not just involved evolved now i think it has been uh, with us for uh, um, ages i think that's that's quite insightful and a very interesting perspective so moving further into depth in in this entire world of experience design in fact there's there's been a recent debate that including demographic data in personas is harmful um, it says that uh, you know they're just stereotypes of how people have behaved what what do you think about it uh, in fact, Alan Cooper was the first to bring the concept of uh, design personas. Um, we used to create a fake person just to give life uh, for our design work, uh, utilize this person to make sure we have some informed decisions. Uh, and I don't think it is a good idea to use uh, a lot of demographic data in personas, and I don't believe in it. Uh, at Frog, what uh, we prefer to do is you know, use more of archetypes, more which describes target groups based on common attitudes, behaviors, expectations, and pain points. So these profiles, um, you know, really helps us uh, help the team to uncover some of the potential opportunity areas for addressing the needs um, of customer goals. So uh, I really don't you know, uh, go with the demographic uh, data, which is which is not really important for persons. Okay, and um, is there any other um, better approach to creating personas apart from what you mentioned of using it, Frog? Yeah, so I feel uh, you know some simple steps for creating personas are you know having a catchy uh, name and a nice tagline. You need to describe their life situations, define um, maybe their expectations, capture some of their habits, uh, find a code that describes the most important thing the persona should convey. More than that, what I feel, I really feel is um, more than the approach, creating a better approach, I would rather say we put the personas to a better use. I don't see many designers using persona in the design process. We just create one, you know, persona or two personas just for the part of the process and move on. It is very important to take personas to the next level. I think taking a, you know, a good printout of your personas, putting it on your desk, putting it on the um, uh, work areas or maybe the discussion rooms. Um, we need to see them every day. Remember that you're creating uh, products, designs, services for them. We need to really become like a detective, uh, gathering as much info uh, possible about this person that you're working for. One other thing is, uh, you know, the persona details should be always given to development team 
the development team should have personas, the pictures posted in their work area. They also need to know everything um, you know, about the person whom they're developing for. Either it is an admin user or is it like an e-commerce user. For whom are they developing? And they need to really pictureize uh, those people. So it's really important, not just for designers, even for the development team. You know, Lude, in fact, um, one of the points that uh, we had parked some time back was about this word user interface. And, you right. know, my one of my uh, curiosity is that do you believe that experience design should be separated from interface design? I mean, is it time to break the UI and the UX? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, really, I've come across many times where, you know, maybe UX designers, they feel they're, you know, um, uh, higher uh, when compared to UI or uh, VD. Um, but, you know, with the current trends and the new designers coming into teams, we don't really differentiate UX designers or visual designers. At Frog, we are working to make sure our designers are product designers, both focused on um, uh, user experience as well as uh, visual design. Um, we are also getting elements of, uh, you know, uh, design technologies who focus on the UI. So it is very important to be able to shape the entire product requirement and not just uh, part of it. So young designers like to work, um, you know, whoever is coming as freshers and, you know, learning a lot and coming in. They like to work on both um, UX and VD. And they're eager to, you know, um, uh, work on these kind of projects as a, the entire chunk of work and not bits and pieces. So hence I feel... We should not differentiate, uh, but support and encourage designers to work on the entirety. There is nothing like a UX is greater or uh, VD is uh, lesser important or UI is lesser. So everything is connected. I would really like to coin a word just as designer rather than UI UX. So Lude, what with, with what you were mentioning earlier and um, even taking the uh, COVID situation, do you think that if the government was to use solutions like system design, they they would be at the front in 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 the forefront to fight uh, these wars of COVID and traffic and and a lot of other challenges around? Um, I, I really feel the, um, uh, not just the COVID situation. Um, it is really important for every government uh, department. They should have uh, designers, design leaders. New ideas uh, really come from listening to people, observing uh, people, understanding people's problem in a detailed way. I don't think we have uh, teams in government who are doing this. Uh, I've been emphasizing in various forums about the importance. We had one recently with uh, Niti Ayu. Uh, there have been many departments who are failing to provide government services. People are uh, struggling to avail services or get basic information about the service or uh, you know facilities that they want. Um, uh, one other example um, I would like to connect is Ministry of Happiness from uh, Government of UAE, where they try to understand how can we make citizens happy. What is that citizens need to be happy in the in the in the country? Um, if design is given importance uh, in nation building. Think about the changes and possibilities. We have been creating wonderful experiences for uh, mobile apps. We have been designing phones. We have been designing TVs. We have been designing, you know, space designs and, you know, various um, uh, forums. But if a designer works for a government service infrastructure and betterment of Indian cities, I think we could really create wonders in the uh, government departments. In fact, I completely agree to uh, that thought, uh, Lude. Um, I was at Singapore last year and the government of Singapore has a separate department, uh, design department, which assists all the other departments so that they can create better, sustainable uh, and you know convenient solution for, for their population. So that's, that's quite an interesting thing to see. Right. Great. So, Lude, moving from there... Um, to one of my, you know, the the last set of question is, at Avantika, we coined this term called as designering. And we personally believe that uh, the worlds of design 
and technology or engineering come together and there's a very interesting um, you know uh, situation that it creates what's your view on this do you think designering um, as a concept uh, you you see that flourishing in due course of time um uh, 100% um, you know i would really uh, agree with this because um, design is going to be the next innovation so i feel um, design nering right uh, the entire process of doing uh, an engineering with a design view i think this is the most important thing that you know we need to think about Uh, our engineers who are coming out of college and you know um, the, the various students coming from different kinds of educational background i think having design as one of the prime um, learning curve or you know having the design thinking process in anything that we do uh, would really make sense to you know get them uh, to the right picture and right track so lude while we were doing this discussion one of the um, questions that i had is with this abundance of ideologies that are making rounds on internet what would you tell aspirants to refer as a bible um i have couple of uh, suggestions here uh, first thing is i keep telling uh, to many designers i've come across in uh, in various forums and in teams uh, please be empathetic towards uh, people friends colleagues and uh, society we need to first respect and understand each other very well uh, we are into people business we work very close to emotions and psychology of people it's not just creating ui ux experiences we are working very closely with people and for the people need uh, second important thing is we need to observe uh, people a lot of course after the covid situation uh, gets better this is a biggest asset for designers um make sure every moment you see is captured we also study market uh, we go through a lot of apps and competition uh, read blogs uh, see the best design but we never focus on the user or people uh, i tell many times we have taken time to learn about different people community or society many of the designers miss this part we ignore our surroundings or we don't see you know each other or we just you know forget about the users as such um third thing is um especially uh, design students you need to think about solving people's problem uh, designers are the new innovators so i think um, that's a, a important one for design student fourth is uh, like i said brainstorming is is the most important part of um, uh, any project i really feel if you are in college or in office or you are in any kind of uh, projects that you do the more um, productive your team will be if you brainstorm regularly and effectively so these are my you know some of my suggestions for uh, students and freshers and you know maybe other designers excellent so moving from there uh, lude to my last segment and we call this a gyan vyan yeah. session so it's like a quickie takeaway segment um in terms of your views uh so i'll be putting across quite a few questions to you and we would like to hear your top of the mind answers to these questions so are you ready for this sure go ahead okay great uh so the first question is you need to pick up a superpower being able to read minds or know exactly what the solution to a problem is which of these superpowers would you select uh i would uh, go with the reading the mind and why so uh that's the most important thing uh to learn about uh, an individual to support him to make sure you know to be comfortable with him so i think uh, the mind reading would be the choice i would go with okay it reminds me of one of those films that i'd seen <laughs> on uh, on a, they they had a nike case um, so this film called as what women want and was pretty interesting where he could read uh, you know what the customers actually think about um, you know shoes as a product so moving yeah. to my second question uh, can you describe me your design ideology um first thing uh, about any designer is um, you know really having you know uh, ideas 
uh, or a solution or an innovation then going and brainstorming and you know working with various people who's thinking uh, in similar lines and how can we uh, get the best product out of it uh, and realizing it the third thing is convincing the teams and how do you go and you know implement uh, the entire thing so just having ideas or design ideas wouldn't really work we need to brainstorm we need to really innovate and then you know try to make sure it is feasible and implementable okay and what is a chatbot to you is it a guide or is it an annoyance um chatbot for some extent is good uh, if i want a straightforward answer it is good but if it's trying to replace uh, somebody and if, if they would collect my number and they would say get back uh, i would not be really interested to uh, go with the chatbot the chatbot should be much more um, you know scalable uh, i re- i remember about the amazon watson where it it takes about 5 years 10 years to really learn patterns uh, really learn from what people have been uh, giving answers and um, you know uh, suggesting uh, answers for many people so even if chatbot is there it would take ages for them to learn and you know give uh, right feedback so one is not just uh, for the sake of providing a chatbot you know it doesn't work uh, in that way okay and um, here is a tough one uh, if you could speak in only five words about your entire life what would those five words be um difficult question <laughs> so <laughs> I, i told you so difficult question um five words um okay i'll start uh emotions design uh empathy loving and uh, caring okay though though they were synonymous but let's let's take them <laughs> so what's your reaction um if a client told you that lord we do not require any kind of user research what's your reaction uh it really depends on uh, what kind of project uh, if the project is a straight forward project we wouldn't you know go and uh, push hard for uh, design research imagine we are doing a very complex project uh, a very challenging project we really i don't understand uh, people's problem and their requirement we would actually give justification what is the importance of design research how would you um, have the benefits of people's voices uh, their uh, ethnography study uh, the detailed the feedbacks from your users so we would actually project and give those uh, feedbacks and um, we would show the importance of the design research if it is really required uh, we would do uh, most of the time we would do out of uh, budget but if it is really something that is big scale we would ask for the right budget and you know we would uh, try to explore to do the design research part but if it's a straight forward thing uh, based on the experience that we have we would move forward okay interesting and lude if you were a animal in the animal kingdom in your company who would you be which animal you, would you be and why uh i would really be elephant and why um elephant is uh, is a calm and um, a nice uh, p- a person in the forest he, he doesn't go and you know disturb uh, others and in in a similar way people uh, scared to come to uh, elephant okay so you you said a lot of lot of things about yourself <laughs> in the organization <laughs> and here is the last one lude a book that you recommend uh, to all our listeners that it's a must read book which which one would that um, be um i would go with um, innovation um, by there's a book which is very important that uh, i read uh, from um, uh, david kelly uh, innovation uh, for design just a moment maybe why I'll... why do you recommend this um it was it was purely uh by yeah sorry i have the book so it's called the art of innovation by tom kelly uh, he was brother of david kelly um both are co-founders of um, ido 
uh, again IDO is our competitor but uh, it's a fantastic book uh, a lot of innovation I really like about innovations uh, and it gives a lot of perspective how teams behave and you know how teams should actually work together and innovate together uh, what are the brainstorm sessions they need to have so that's a wonderful book I would suggest uh, everybody to read great so I think this was really insightful, uh, Lude. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you so much uh, for doing this. Hey there, we hope you enjoyed our show. Do write to us on ads at the rate in. We look forward to your opinions, feedbacks and suggestions of speakers you would like us to host on this show. Do tune in our channel next week on Wednesday for a new story on Hub Hopper or wherever you get your podcast from. Make sure you follow us on social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and tune in with us on our journey and don't forget to share it with your friends.